where the world ceases to be the scene of our personal hopes and wishes, where we face it as free beings admiring, asking, observing, there we enter the realm of art and science. Although I am a typical loner in daily life, my consciousness of belonging to the invisible community of those who strive for truth, beauty, and justice has preserved me from feeling isolated. Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. He who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead, his eyes are closed. A happy man is too satisfied with the present to dwell too much on the future. I speak to everyone in the same way, whether he is the garbage man or the president of the university. I am enough of an artist to draw freely upon my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existence. I am by heritage a Jew, by citizenship a Swiss, and by makeup a human being, and only a human being, without any special attachment to any state or national entity whatsoever. Great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. My passion for social justice has often brought me into conflict with people, as has my aversion to any obligation and dependence I did not regard as absolutely necessary. If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. I cannot tell if I would have done any creative work of importance in music, but I do know that I get most joy in life out of my violin. My passion for social justice has often brought me into conflict with people, as has my aversion to any obligation and dependence I did not regard as absolutely necessary. One thing I have learned in a long life, that all our science, measured against reality, is primitive and childlike and yet it is the most precious thing we have. Few are those who see with their own eyes and feel with their own hearts. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existence. One cannot help but be in awe when he contemplates the mysteries of eternity, of life, of the marvelous structure of reality. It is enough if one tries merely to comprehend a little of this mystery each day. A human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feeling as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. I speak to everyone in the same way, whether he is the garbage man or the president of the university. When you are courting a nice girl an hour seems like a second. When you sit on a red-hot cinder a second seems like an hour. That's relativity. Two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity and I'm not sure about the universe. When you trip over love, it is easy to get up. But when you fall in love, it is impossible to stand again. I am enough of an artist to draw freely upon my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Once you can accept the universe's matter expanding into nothing that is something, wearing stripes with plaid comes easy. The world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. We all know that light travels faster than sound. That's why certain people appear bright until you hear them speak. The most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and true science. If you want your children to be intelligent, Read them fairy tales. 
If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. It would be possible to describe everything scientifically, but it would make no sense, it would be without meaning, as if you described a Beethoven symphony as a variation of wave pressure. On the mysterious, it is the fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle of true art and true science. He who knows it not and can no longer wonder, no longer feel amazement, is as good as dead, a snuffed out candle. I am by heritage a Jew by citizenship a Swiss, and by makeup a human being, and only a human being, without any special attachment to any state or national entity whatsoever. To see with one's own eyes, to feel and judge without succumbing to the suggestive power of the fashion of the day, to be able to express what one has seen and felt in a trim sentence or even in a cunningly wrought word, is that not glorious? Is it not a proper subject for congratulation? to raise new questions, new possibilities, to regard old problems from a new angle, requires creative imagination and marks real advance in science. I do not at all believe in human freedom in the philosophical sense. Everybody acts not only under external compulsion but also in accordance with inner necessity. Any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage, to move in the opposite direction. The only thing I did was this, in long intervals I have expressed an opinion on public issues whenever they appeared to me so bad and unfortunate that silence would have made me feel guilty of complicity. How strange is the lot of us mortals! Each of us is here for a brief sojourn, for what purpose he knows not, though he sometimes thinks he senses it. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Measured objectively, what a man can wrest from truth by passionate striving is utterly infinitesimal. But the striving frees us from the bonds of the self and makes us comrades of those who are the best and the greatest. As for the search for truth, I know from my own painful searching, with its many blind alleys, how hard it is to take a reliable step, be it ever so small towards the understanding of that which is truly important. A theory is the more impressive the greater the simplicity of its premises, the more different kinds of things it relates, and the more extended its area of applicability. A person who is religiously enlightened appears to me to be one who has, to the best of his ability, liberated himself from the fetters of his selfish desires and is preoccupied with thoughts, feelings, and aspirations to which he clings because of their superpersonal value. On receiving Lord and Taylor reward, it gives me great pleasure, indeed, to see the stubbornness of an incorrigible nonconformist warmly acclaimed. The really valuable thing in the pageant of human life seems to me not the state but the creative, sentient individual, the personality, it alone creates the noble and the sublime while the herd as such remains dull in thought and full in feeling. The formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution, which may be merely a matter of mathematical or experimental skill. The formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution, which may be merely a matter of mathematical or experimental skill. The man who regards his own life and that of his fellow creatures as meaningless is not merely unfortunate but almost disqualified for life. There is a race between mankind and the universe. Mankind is trying to build bigger, better, faster, and more foolproof machines. The universe is trying to build bigger, better, and faster fools. So far the universe is winning. After receiving a distinction from Chicago Decalogue Society, how unfortunate a state must a community find itself if it cannot produce a more suitable candidate upon whom to confer such a distinction. As for the words of warm praise addressed to me, I shall carefully refrain from disputing them. For who still believes that there is such a thing as genuine modesty? I should run the risk of being taken for just an old hypocrite. As for the words of warm praise addressed to me, I shall carefully refrain from disputing them. For who still believes that there is such a thing as genuine modesty? 
I should run the risk of being taken for just an old hypocrite.